The meaning of our existence has captivated the human species for as long as we've held the ability to form complex thoughts. In other words, ever since we were able to ask the question why, we've been on a quest to one day discover not just the how of our existence, but the precise reasoning for the cause rather than just the effect. For many, many years, attempting to explain the formation of the universe and the evolution into life was an act of futility. We've covered many theories regarding the creation of the Earth, solar system, and universe at large, combining both statistical astrophysics and hypothetical thinking to determine the most likely cause of our being. What we haven't fully dissected, however, is a theory that stems a little bit from various ideas, all coming together to form the Boltzmann brain. What exactly is the Boltzmann brain? On the surface, it's nothing more than one in a countless pool of thought experiments. But when you pick the concept apart, it's the spur to a fascinating conversation about the potential of our universe's past, present, and future. Let's dive deeper into the Boltzmann brain. Boltzmann brains are defined as disembodied entities that exhibit self-awareness on a hypothetical scale. The dominating idea is that our existence, or more specifically, the existence of oneself, is more likely due to a statistical fluctuation in entropy than it is the result of the universe developing such extreme and specific amounts of energy over time to harbor what is already a statistical anomaly. Before we dive into the complexities of the Boltzmann brain itself, it might serve us better to first peel back the layers on a much simpler version of chance in forming the causation or creation of something. This brings us to the infinite monkey theorem. Infinite monkey theorem is the idea that if you had a monkey sitting at a typewriter, hitting the keys purely at random for the rest of eternity, at some point, the monkey will almost surely write any text that has ever existed such as the Bible or works like the Odyssey. To take it a step further, not only would the monkey type out all finite texts, but it would type out all finite texts an infinite number of times. Of course, it should be noted that the odds of this happening are extremely low. So extremely low that if an internal monkey actually carried on such a task, it would take them longer than the current age of the universe to write something as singular as the Odyssey in its original form. In fact, it could take so much time that one might declare the probability as good as zero. But with a metaphorical output of infinite numbers, at some point, anything could happen given enough time. Infinite monkey theorem can also be directly proven with a simple equation. If a typewriter contains keys for all 26 letters of an alphabet, plus a few more necessary keys, it would have 30 keys altogether. For the monkey to spell the word ape, each letter would have a 1 in 30 probability of hitting in sequential order, as each new letter always comes with the same 1 out of 30 chance. Thus, the probability of a monkey randomly typing ape on a typewriter of 30 keys is 1 out of 27,000, or 0.0037%. Typing ape on a 30-key typewriter is much different than typing the Odyssey on a standard 44-key typewriter. This involves hundreds of thousands of words and would include a probability so low it would be unbelievable. But that's the beauty with these theories and paradoxical ideas. Just like the Boltzmann brain, the infinite monkey theorem might be so logical it's illogical as humans to this day still struggle with the concept of eternity as it relates to probability. The entire structure of the Boltzmann brain thought experiment began with the questioning of the second law of thermodynamics by mathematician Ernst Sermello. According to NASA, the second law of thermodynamics states that if the physical process is irreversible, the combined entropy of the system and the environment must increase. 
the final entropy must be greater than the initial entropy for an irreversible process. The aforementioned Zermelo proposed an idea that the entropy of a closed system eventually becomes a periodic function of the system itself. This would mean the second law is not statistical, and therefore had no mathematical explanation to support it. Enter Ludwig Boltzmann. Boltzmann the man was a 19th century Austrian philosopher and physicist who spent much of his life studying the second law of thermodynamics. More specifically, he was interested in the statistical explanation of its application and was thrust into the limelight when Zermelo's proposition was scrutinized heavily by the astrophysic community. Boltzmann was eager to share his findings, and in the same year Zermelo published his questioning, Boltzmann published his official theories. Overall, his defining message was that the universe harbors much less chaos than the rules of the thermodynamics were predicting at the time. When developing this message, Boltzmann broke his brainstorming down into two specific theories. The first theory actually mirrors much of what we believe to be true today in regards to the Big Bang Theory. In 1896, Boltzmann described it more vaguely. He believed the formation of the universe occurred mysteriously at random due to entering a low entropy state of order. He also believed in the merits of a second theory, one first ideated in 1895 by the physicist's former assistant. This theory states that the universe was, is, and always will be an eternal entity in a featureless state. This is called thermodynamic equilibrium and is actually part of the theory called the Big Chill, or the heat death of the universe, one of the proposed endings to the entire cosmos. Boltzmann's personal findings add an important qualifier. He stated that at a certain point during this heat death constant, an incredibly rare type of irregular thermal change occurred. Through this change, atoms crashed into one another at such a specific order that it formed an obstructive byproduct that posed as the birth of our observable universe. The unobservable portion of the universe is what remains in its featureless state of heat death, unseen by humankind due to the lack of intelligence away from Earth. Boltzmann continued by saying if our universe happened due to random fluctuation, then everything, including our self-aware brains, will at one point be born out of a featureless state with smaller structures being created more frequently than larger ones, such as entire universes. This is where the Boltzmann brain theory intersects closest with the infinite monkey theorem. In our version of the experiment, we use the word ape as a test subject. We highlighted how the probability of three letters being typed consecutively comes with much greater odds than an entire epic, much like a brain would come up with much greater odds than an entire universe filled with both brains and galaxies in a Boltzmann brain scenario. Many people hear of the Boltzmann brain theory and ask, what's the difference between a single brain and a universe filled with them? It all comes down to self-awareness. What separates a Boltzmann brain from the universe itself is that a Boltzmann brain is a single self-aware entity as in you or I, that creates its own memory of existence. This idea circumvents the theory that the universe was born itself, but rather was born from our own singular brain telling us as much. To paint a much more vivid picture of the Boltzmann brain, they look and act like a normal, average human brain, filled with shared experiences of living a complete human life. They are full of complexities, including the nagging thought that such a concept is impossible in and of itself. When it's all said and done, dissecting a Boltzmann brain is a fool's errand, at least in terms of the paradoxes and false theories that come with the idea of being a Boltzmann brain. The idea that the entire universe only exists as an intangible concept created from false memories makes some people call it a god complex, while others might call it a shared delusion. The truth of the matter is, the Boltzmann brain is there more as a question of thermodynamics and thermal equilibrium and not as a matter of fact or fiction. But like anything that challenges the laws of physics, 
there are problems with the overall thought experiment. The biggest problem of all is, you cannot prove a Boltzmann brain is real because of the near infinite number of Boltzmann brains that would exist. If time is infinite, Boltzmann observers would be born out of entropy fluctuations much more frequently and would greatly outnumber normal observers who are not created as Boltzmann observers. As such, one would never be able to confidently or accurately come to the conclusion that they are in fact a Boltzmann brain, as shared memories and experiences by normal observers would remove those labels as subsets of a Boltzmann observer. In simpler terms, it's impossible to provide observable evidence of being a Boltzmann brain, just as it's impossible to provide observable evidence of the contrary. Like many theoretical aspects of astronomy and astrophysics, the Boltzmann brain thought experiment is an inevitable letdown. It's an idea that we can solve yet another mystery of the universe, while simultaneously creating another 100 mysteries. As long as humanity persists, these questions and conversations will continue. While we will probably never know exactly how or why the universe came to be, some may find comfort in knowing our souls are accidental fluctuations of a featureless state. After all, we're already such small blips in the observable universe. Who's to say we're not small blips of an infinite timeline, surrounded by other small blips of other timelines? Some might call it a multiverse, while others might call it pure spontaneity. What do you think? Is the universe just one giant Boltzmann brain? To be determined.